cattle. Instead, she perfected the art of surviving on her own. Without the help of a prize, this monkey's had to adapt. When she hunts, the combination of patience, power, and speed is spectacular. of her movement. The average age of a lion in the wild is 16. She has about six years to produce a litter. To find a mate for Lady, the team goes to neighboring Kafue National Park. Audio recordings of lionesses lure the males. Dr. Ian Parsons darts two maps. As a coalition, they stand a better chance to survive the trauma of a translocation. The big question on everyone's mind 
is whether these two males will bond with Lady. If they do bond with her, she might be able to teach them how to keep a low profile and avoid the villages. The two lions wake up in an enclosure, or a boma, right in the middle of Lady's core territory. One of the males is three years old, the other a bit younger. Lady is almost eight years their senior. The age gap is intentional. Older lions might not submit to Lady's authority. Hopefully, these youngsters will. This is the first time in years that Lady has set eyes on her own kind. She keeps watch as the two males familiarize themselves with their new home. The first piece of the puzzle falls into place. But then, disaster strikes. On the fifth day in the boat, they escape. Finding themselves in a strange environment, they could take fright and bolt. To Herbert's relief, he finds them a few hundred meters from the enclosure. Lady's response is odd. She rolls to show them she is not a threat, but she doesn't approach them. The males are aware they are in her territory. Everything is new. It's going to take time to adjust. Before she leaves, Lady marks the territory with her urine. It's a strong message. She's the landowner. They are the squatters. And then she leaves them. The presence of two new lions in Lua has a huge impact on the local residents. It's not only villagers that are now at risk. The arrival of the two lions jeopardizes the hyena's position of power.
as the most experienced hunter in this trio. She is happy to share her kill. The fact that she allows the males to join her and that they don't chase her off the carcass is significant. Eating together is the first building block of a pride. Her reward is companionship. The males get the lion's share of her kill. They gorge themselves and can eat up to a quarter of their own weight in one city. For the first time, Herbert sees the two males compete. It is the younger of the two brothers that emerges as the dominant male. He's the one that follows her when she's in estrus. and blindfolded, the two females begin their journey to Lua. Their arrival is coded in irony. The tribe settled here more than a hundred years ago on the orders of the first king to protect the wildlife. But many of them have never seen a lion. 
And yet lions have always played an important part in the biodiversity of Luan. African parks aims to restore the balance. But this is only possible if Lady remains the central character. She must teach the new arrivals to lay in the land and teach them to keep away from the wolves. Contracted, she puts the males in their place. Four cats now crowd her space after years of solitude. When the males were in the boma, Lady disappeared for days. But now she is intrigued by the cubs. She keeps constant vigil. The electrical current that runs through the fence is non-lethal, but does give a sharp jolt. Lady is clever. She discovers a broken wire and tries to gain access where the circuit is breached. The males are perturbed by the new arrivals. But before they get any ideas, Lady asserts herself. The balance of power might have shifted, but she's still in control. After five weeks in the Boma, the team feels the young females are ready to be released. Not sure how the males will react, they lure them away with a 
fresh carcass. The young cubs have also not been fed for a couple of days. When the gates open, a new chapter begins. Lady is first on the scene. The cubs have spent more than a month in the boma to adjust. The question now is whether this newly forged bond will hold when they step through the gate. outside the boma. Anything can happen. The brown-collared female is first to bolt. The white collar is cornered before she can escape. Her 
assertiveness could be her saving grace. At the right moment, she crouches in submission. is tricky. The small helicopter can barely lift her, and the ground team must help before the pilot manages to get his precious cargo airborne. The males have slipped off the radar, and the team hopes they will turn around on their own. Meanwhile, more trouble unfolds close to the boat.
anesthetic is extremely agitated. She's on the wrong side of the fence and she can't dig her way out. becomes a central prop in this battle of wits between these two cats. The young female catches on very quickly. She is lighter. If height is of any consequence, she can go higher. From her elevated position, the young female spots the surviving lion. He is just returning from Angola, alone. It seems as if every breakthrough in this project is shadowed by a new set of problems. The two brothers formed a strong coalition. They made this territory their own and for four years managed to stay out of trouble with the villagers. The hope of establishing a new generation of lions now resides with the survivor. The male now follows the young female which she hunts. To feed both of them, 
she must target bigger prey. Kingdom. 